I got the GNS 530 from Flight Sim Builder. So I'm going to show you real quick what comes in the box, how to quickly set it up, and then we're going to look at it in action. We're going to put this thing in action and I'm gonna walk you through. And then I'll give you my final thoughts on the overall product. Let's see what we got. It's the HDMI cable. It's a little stand. Yeah, nice little stand. We'll see how it goes. High speed computer cable. We got a USB cable. The HDMI gives us the video that displays on the G530. The power cable. This is going to provide the, uh, the 12 volt power supply for the device. Oh, check it out. We got some styrofoam pads. Oh, take a look. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it might be. Let's see. Built by Flight Sim Builders. It looks pretty close to what the Garmin 530 is. Yeah, so all the buttons, they feel good. Buttons feel good. The buttons move really smooth. They don't feel cheesy. It doesn't feel cheap. It's a nice solid design. That OBS and the procedure button. So it looks pretty accurate to what you're gonna find. Let's see if this joint works as good as it looks. Let's get it plugged up. First thing to set up is really easy. When it comes out the box, it comes wrapped up all pretty and everything. It only has three cables you gotta worry about plugging in. You got your HDMI cable, which gives you the display because the actual unit itself is a bezel with the knobs and buttons and then the display, which actually is just another screen. So it displays what's on the GPS screen in X-Plane. You got your USB cord that connects your computer so it can you know, do all the joystick stuff. And you got your power cable. So three plugs and they all go behind it so it doesn't look real sloppy and messy. It looks real neat and clean. The setup for it is not too complicated. It takes a few steps, but really all you're gonna do is you plug it in. When you go to X-Plane, if that's what you're using, it gives you the button layout and then you just set all the buttons to whatever the setting is or whatever goes in each block. And you ain't gotta do it again. It took me about five minutes to do it, so it really wasn't that long. So when you look at this, here's the frame, here's all the knobs, and there's the screen. Whatever's on the screen is replicated up there, see up there, in the actual system in the flight simulator. So anything you push on here and anything displayed there will be repeated up there. So you'll be able to see it up there and down here. So for example, right now I'm changing the frequency for my standby radio, change it to whatever, and I press the comm switch button and it'll switch it to the primary. If I press in the center of the left knob, switches the change of my navigation radio just like an airplane then I press the V switch and it switches it from the secondary to the primary your range button changes the range it's just like in the airplane like this is money CDI switches all the buttons work message it'll give you whatever messages are there pop up your flight plan for you set up your VNAV then the procedures and then even the different pages and different chapters are all there just like in the flight simulator. Like, come on. What better way to practice than to be able to have it do exactly what it do. Have it do what it's do like it's doing it for TV. Like, really. I mean, look how smooth and easy this is. Like, too easy. This is it right here. So let's see it in action. All right, so I'm up in the air and I'm flying, right? We up here flying, we're doing our thing. Okay, so we got our map displayed. Now everything I'm doing, I'm doing down here on the knob and you see it's changing. I'm doing on the actual GNS Flight Sim Builder. So everything I do down here, you can see in the flight slim on the display. So as you turn it, you ain't gotta use your mouse to try to change the frequencies to go through the different pages. You just sit here and twist the knobs here and it's so clear on the display. So for example, I'm gonna go direct to K, P, U and then back to the inside now. J. Paulden Southwest. Enter. Activate. 
gives me a message inside airspace near head navigate out of data well, yeah it is out of data because <laughs> it is uh, explained so make sure you are uh, looking at it right make sure you got the right stuff this is for training anyway so I hope you're not flying with this data All right, I got. I can set my CDI to GPS, and now my CDI is gonna be set up for GPS. It can either be GPS, VLOC, however you set it up. Whatever you're doing and how you're gonna fly it, that's how you're gonna do it. Let's see, procedure, select an approach. I'm gonna go with the RNAV GPS 3.1 for vectors. We're gonna not just load it, we're gonna activate it. Boom, audit. And you know what, I wanna go direct to audit. And now my flight plan is displayed there. Like check it out, I don't have to pull up the mouse and nothing and click on it, I got it right here. I just twist the knobs and I'm there, I'm winning. It's much easier to actually practice by twisting the knobs and actually changing the, you know, changing the frequencies, going to procedure page, you know, setting it up the way that I'm gonna do it in real life. So why do I go with the Garmin G530 instead of the G1000? Well, here's a couple reasons. Well, number one reason is most of y'all still fly with G430s or G530s, and they're real similar in operation. And the other reason is because the G1000 model is on back order. So <laughs> whenever that comes in, I probably get that one too. But most of y'all, like I said, we're going to still be using this 430 for a long time because they still out there. They reasonably priced. And if you ain't trying to pay an arm and a leg on your flight lessons, you're going to probably still be using the Garmin 430 or the Garmin 530. There you go. I think that this is a great tool to use for flight training, especially if you're doing your instrument rating, you're doing your CFII, or you practice with somebody to help you get better at using your equipment. The buttons feel real, it's a solid piece of equipment, and it just, it's gonna make you that much better because when you got better equipment to use, you got better practice. The GNS 530 from Flight Sim Builder. It makes it more real when you're flying, makes it easier and better to practice when you're trying to get better at your instrument approach procedures. And it just makes it more fun. But you're not trying to use your mouse to click on the buttons and everything. You can use the actual controls and feel what it actually feels like when you're in the airplane. So when you go from practicing at home to practicing in the plane, it all feels the same. Using the right stuff is gonna help you practice better to do better. I'm gonna put the link in the description for the GNS, the Flight Sim Builder GNS 530. So if you like it, you wanna try it out, you can get it. And because I got it, and the reason I got it is to be able to help people better understand how to use the equipment they're playing and become better pilots. If there's an instrument approach you wanna see me use or wanna see me do, go ahead and drop it in there and let me know, and I'll show you how to do it. Kenny T, out.